Hi, in today's video I'm going to show you how to make a custom performance meter. So the performance meter is the uh, thing like this that shows you the CPU, RAM and uh, voices count for your instrument. So uh, we're going to make a custom one. I'm first of all going to show you the stock one. So if we add a floating tile to our interface and from the content type select, uh, where is it, performance label, then we get the same thing that we see up here with the CPU, the RAM and the voices. But this isn't very customizable. We can change the text color and we can change the font, but that's about it. There isn't really a lot we can do with it. If you want to make a completely custom one, then you have to do it from scratch. And that's what I'm going to show you today. So we'll leave that one up there as a kind of reference. We're going to do this in a panel. So we'll add a panel to our, our interface. We'll call it PNL Performance. And we're going to grab a reference to it. So I'll just right click on it, select Create Script Variable Definition and paste it in over here. Now panels have a timer. So we can actually use the panel's timer and run it continuously. And we'll just check in the timer what the CPU usage is, what the RAM usage is, what the voice count is, and draw that in the panel. So to access the panel's timer callback, we're going to write PNL performance. So the name of our panel dot set timer callback. And then we pass in a function. And this is what's going to happen every time the timer ticks. So the timer just it just counts and when it hits a certain interval that we've set, so let's say we say 100 milliseconds, so every 100 milliseconds it's going to call this function. And we can just see that, we'll just print out something. And I'll bring the console up here so we can see that. And it won't do anything yet because we haven't started the timer. So let's start the timer. So to do that, we're going to write PNL performance dot start timer. And then we have to give it the time interval in milliseconds. So I'm going to put 100 in here. So every 100 milliseconds, it's going to print out hello world to the console. So there we go. And I'll just comment this out, stop it going and hit F5. Okay, so now instead of printing hello world, let's print out the current uh, CPU usage. So we can write engine.get uh, CPU usage, and we'll start the timer going again. I'm just going to increase this uh, interval size so it's not printing out quite as much. And we'll hit F5, and there we go. We can see the CPU usage. So now what we're going to do is use this uh, value, the CPU usage, and we're going to set that to the panel's text property. We could set it to the panel's value, but I like to set it to the text property. So we'll write uh, this because we're already in the panel. So this refers to the panel dot set text. And we'll put engine dot get CPU usage. Now we can remove this comment now. And now we're going to assign a paint routine to the panel. PNL performance dot set paint routine. And we'll get the area of the panel into a variable called A. And now we'll set the color. We'll just set it to the panel's text color, which we haven't set yet, actually. Let's set that to white. There we go. And when I hit F5, this panel is going to vanish because now we are drawing it. It's still actually there, of course. And now we'll draw the text, g dot uh, draw align text. And the text is going to be the panel's text. So this dot get text. The area will be our A variable. And the string alignment, uh, let's do it centered. So it's going to be in the middle of the panel. And it's not going to do anything yet because we haven't started our timer going. And the other thing we need to do is we actually need to tell highs to repaint the panel from within this uh, timer callback. So we'll just write this dot repaint here after the text has been set. And now let's start our timer. There we go. Now the standard performance meter just shows one 
number after the decimal point, ours is showing a whole lot more. So we can change that. We can get it to match this with just one, or we can have it show two. I think we'll have it show two. So to do that, we can we'll add it to our uh, little line here where we're setting the text. And we'll write engine dot double to string. And then for the value, we're actually going to put our CPU usage. So I'll just paste that there. And then for the second parameter, digits, that's just how many digits we want to show. So we'll put two here. And at the end of this string, actually, I'll put the percent sign. So we'll just append that onto the end there using the uh, plus operator. And I'll hit F5. And there we go, it's to two decimal places now. If you want that to be one decimal place, just change that two to a one. I'm going to leave it as two. So that does it for the CPU. We can have other properties as well. So let's uh, put this into its own variable. So we'll just cut that bit of text there and we'll call it this variable CPU usage. And that's going to be equal to that text we had. And then in here, we can put CPU usage. So it's going to be exactly the same. It's just we've put it into this little uh, variable here to make it a bit easier to read. And let's have another one for uh, RAM usage. That's going to be equal to engine dot get is it RAM, get memory, memory usage. There it is. And we can append that onto here. And we can put a pipe symbol between the CPU usage and the RAM usage. And we can put some more text there to make it match the original one. Something like that. And if I had a sampler and load in some samples, I'll just load in a sample map I've got here. So now we can see there is some uh, RAM usage there. And again, we could round it because we don't want that big long number there. So let's uh, do our double to string trick again. And we'll just put one, I think. And we can actually add the MB symbol there. There we go. Okay, and the last one is the voices. So we'll put a new variable and it's going to be the same thing. Engine dot get num voices. And we'll just append that onto here. And there we go. So of course the advantage of doing it this way is we don't actually have to make it look anything like the original one. We can customize it however we like. I've just used this to sort of show you that it's possible. But as we've seen, you don't have to have all of the values. You don't have to have the CPU usage. You don't have to have the RAM usage. You don't have to have the voices. If you just want to show one of them or two of them, you can do that. But what about if you want to draw them in a totally different way? Like let's say we want to have them stacked one on top of each other. So there are a few ways to do that. Um, probably the simplest way is to not go through the text property like we are here. Uh, what we'll do instead is just draw it directly within the panel. So I'll just comment this out and I'll comment this out as well, just so it's there as a reference, but we're not going to use it now. And we're going to copy this section and put it directly into the paint routine. So now we've got all three values in the paint routine, whereas before we only had the one value stored in the text property. So now I can draw the CPU usage here. And let's change the area. We'll have 0, 0, A2. So that's the width of the panel. And let's say 25 for the height. And we'll left align it. Um, let's, let's add a bit to the X, actually. We'll add 10 to the X. So now we've just got the CPU usage. And I'm going to put CPU there. And now on another line, let's copy and paste that. But instead of CPU, we can put RAM. And we can have RAM usage. And instead of zero for the Y, let's put 50. And maybe 50 is too much, let's put 30. So now we've got them on two different lines. We've got the same data, we're just drawing it in a different way. And just to finish off, we'll do the voices as well.
and we'll draw those at uh, 60 for the Y. There we go. And of course you could draw them different colours. So we could, let's say, put a different colour in here. We could do G.setColor, colours.red. So now these two are going to be red, whereas the CPU is going to stay white. And you can do different fonts, you can do different font sizes. You can do anything you want really. You've got the freedom to design the performance meter how you like. So we've got this timer running all the time now. Uh, put an interval in here that is sort of just reasonable. I wouldn't go below 100 milliseconds. I'd probably do something like 200 or 250. Uh, you don't want it to be too slow to update, but you don't want it to be unnecessarily fast because it does use um, more CPU. It's not really be significant, but save wherever you can. Okay, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, as always, just leave them below the video. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, please click like, subscribe and share it with anybody who you think might be interested. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.